something or we need a, you know, Billy Graham or somebody super, super duper special. But I know God that you speak to anybody who wants to listen. Everybody, good evening. Good evening. I like it. <laughs> good evening. The first um, question to everybody before we start is uh, Who here reads the Bible and prays every single day? Please raise your hands. Alright, so those who don't, please start. Alright, that's my message. <laughs> Anyway, uh, today's, um, today's message is called Hearing God's Voice. All right, we have to learn how to hear God's voice. And there are three voices in our mind. Our mind is a battlefield that we have to learn how to control. And the first voice that I want to talk about is your own voice. Your own voice always makes you doubt. Your own voice is lazy. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. You know, your own, your own voice, you know, uh, basically uh, only desires pleasure. And it doesn't humble itself. It's against, you know, it will never want to humble itself. It's against 
God's nature, your own voice. And that's very important to understand that. Uh, please open up with me. Uh, there's going to be lots of Bible verses. So, yeah. so please open up with me. Uh, Romans chapter 8. Verses 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Another word for carnal is flesh. So the fleshly mind is enmity against God. It's like sinful. Right? It cannot be, you know, part of God. But Jesus just specifically said that. And another verse, Galatians 5. Let's see what up over there. Verses 16 all the way down to chapter 6, verse 4. So, yeah, I, I think it's very important. Um, but I say that walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelry, uh, re revelries, and the like. Or of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not enter the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. All right, that's very powerful. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh, which is passion, passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. This verse is specifically talking about if you see your brethren fall or sin, in, you know, he just sins. Instead of, you know, laughing at him and, you know, shutting him down, you help him out. But make sure that he doesn't take that, make sure he doesn't take you down along with him. You know, so there always has to be that other someone to help. Uh, that's very important. Uh, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. All right, remember that. So that's Galatians 5, 16, all the way through chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Uh, the purpose of that, you know, is basically for us to understand how our own voice is corrupt. Our own uh, thoughts, our own ideology, you know, ideology, what we think of ourselves. It's just, you know, it's not according to God's word. Uh, and then the second voice is the devil's voice. The devil's voice is, uh, you know, it's basically telling the truth with a lie in it. You know, and it always uh, plays with your emotions. It always tells you, you know, falsely things. It, it, like, it says that uh, in the Bible that he's the father of all deception. The Father of all lies. And we could read that in uh, John. If you guys are falling asleep, you could just, you know, tell me. Uh, John 8, verses 44. It says, You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in truth, but there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. All right, that's uh, John 8, 44. And there's also uh, another good verse 
I believe it's Matthew 4. Matthew chapter 4. Uh, verses 5 through 7. It says, Then the devil took him up in the holy city. Seven, this is the devil taunting Jesus. So, then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Over here we see that the devil is using the truth to deceive, you know, uh, Jesus. But, the, you know, Jesus is smart enough that he knows the truth, and he responds, Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. He answers back with the word of God. And that's what we should do. Whenever the devil tempts us and, you know, with something that seems to be legit, we always have to look into the scriptures to see if it goes according to it or not. And that's how we know if it's God speaking or the devil speaking. That's why it's very important to know what the Bible says. And that's why, you know, all we have to do is study it. Our emotions play a huge factor when it comes down to listening to God's voice. It's because our emotions trigger our thoughts. Our enemy, the devil, wants to control us. And his target is our, uh, his target is our will. He's trying to control our will. And um, basically, this is how it works. He lies. Uh, we believe it. Uh, the lie affects our emotions. Our emotions get stirred up. It affects the decisions we make. And then we get into, you know, a mess. And it continues and continues. Uh, like for an example, somebody says, well, I don't believe God loves me. I don't feel, I don't believe. That's already a lie because the Bible clearly states that, you know, God loves you. Or I don't believe God has a future for me. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you say. Because it's completely irrelevant to what the Bible says. Because the truth is, God knew you from the beginning and he gave you a purpose and he loved you. So there's no excuses. It doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter what you think. It's just wrong. So, yeah. Uh, it's very important to understand that. And uh, many people uh, believe the lies that the enemy puts in our minds over the word of God. And based on that, we live, you know, and proclaim our truth, which is false. The danger of emotional living. Uh, emotional people make big mistakes. Uh, when they base decisions on how they feel rather than obeying God, uh, you know, they basically, you know, it's very, um, emotions don't always, um, um, it doesn't always uh, meet the requirements that God wants from you. Like you could feel, I'm not in the mood to pray right now. You know, but guess what? You have to pray. It, like, I'm not in the mood to go to work. That's why you have to go to work. It's the same thing. Like, you just have to do these certain things. All right. Uh, example is me. Personally, I could give you my personal example. Today, I have to, you know, preach. And if you asked me before, did I want to preach today, the answer is very simple, no. You gave an example. Yeah, I gave it a lot. Yeah. The truth is, yeah, I don't want to preach today. My life is not, like... You know, perfect. I don't want to, you know, look hypocritical and etc. Everybody sins, etc. Like I have all these thoughts and emotions, but I know what God expects from me, and I know the right thing to do, and I still do what I do because God wants that from me, not because I don't want to do it. You, you know, because I don't want to do it. I'm not. I really don't want to do it. But God wants this from me, and that's why I do. I'm obedient to His word, and I see blessings from that. Uh, I see blessings. In my personal life, he always provides, he always gives me a message, and he always just, you know, on and on. And with my family, everything becomes better, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there's always blessings. He never leaves me, you know, empty handed. It just, it works that way. That's my personal example. And uh, what determines how you live? You know, uh, how often do you say, I feel like, or I don't feel like, and then do what you feel? You know, do your feelings uh, dictate how you treat people or what you say? Do your feelings run your life? We must learn how to manage them, not let them manage us. All right, we have to learn how to control our emotions and feelings. And like, that's the, you know, strongest weapon that the devil uses is our emotions and deceptions and, you know, lies. 
doing truth, you know, so you got to be very clear with that, and that's why it's important, again, to know the Word of God. Uh, the key here is refusing to be passive and making a conscious decision to do what's right. In other words, you know, if you don't feel like doing something, but you know you have to do it, instead of doing nothing about it, you just do it. You know, like, uh, you have to force yourself to do it. And if you can't do it, then pray to God to give you the energy to do it. Pray to God that he will give you the desire to do it, the passion, just, you know, because nobody wants to wake up in the morning and pray. It's really rare when you actually somebody in the morning wakes up and has a passion to, you know, pray, to read the Bible, you know, like, for some people, they read the Bible, like, oh, it's amazing, but for other people, you know, like, oh, this is boring, I read about this, you know, uh, you got to force yourself to do these things, not because... Uh, you don't feel like it or feel like it, but you can see you have to. It's your life. It's what you breathe. It's what you, you, you can't live without it. You can't live without food. You can't live without the Word of God. So it doesn't matter how you feel or how you act, like, you know, what you're going through. It doesn't matter if you haven't been Christian for years, if you just left that. Like, the only way to come back to God is through prayer, reading the Bible, fasting. There's no other way. There's absolutely no other way but, you know, Coming back, to, if you're going through a certain circumstance, you know, like you want you 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 know you worship God, you've been in God uh, for years and years and years, and all of a sudden, you know, something happened in your life, something didn't work out the way you expected to, and you just fall, and then you just say it's impossible for me to come back to God because I've been there, I know it all, and you know I don't want to do it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't want to you know go through the same emotions, the same feelings. It's all nonsense. Again, you know, that person could only come back to God only by reading the Bible, praying, fasting, going to church, attending, and that's the, there's no other second way. You know, like, there's absolutely no. And that will change the person's mind because the truth sets you free. And the truth is the Bible. So, and specifically, there's a verse in the Bible we're going to go to it later where it shows that, you know, uh, the Bible, the Word of God, sets you free. So whatever problem you have, whether, you know, you're going through sin, or whether you're going through some kind of temptation, if you want to, or you're, whether you're going through some circumstance, uh, like my, you know, sister got hit by a bus, and, you know, she was paralyzed, and but like, even she, everybody is going through different circumstances. And the only way, the best way to go through is through reading the Word of God, praying, fasting, serving God. You do that, and you will have your answers. God will provide, and eventually you, your problems will be solved. It will be eventually solved. So, let's continue. Uh, God's voice. God's voice is always comforting, guiding, correcting, and blessing. All right, let's please open up with me Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. That's, you know, leads me, he guides me. Uh, yet, uh, for my sake, verse 4. Uh, yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for, uh, before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. All right. So this verse, these you know, six verses talk about uh, comfort. It talks about how God guides you, leads you, and blesses you, etc. So if you guys want to go into detail, you can study that. Uh, next verse that I wanted to tell you. Wanted to tell you. Learning how to choose what's right from wrong. That's the next thing. Uh, lots of people have a hard time, you know, making decisions. You know, like uh, 
how do I know that I'm listening to God's voice? You know, how do I know is God telling me to go here or is God telling me to go there? You know, the answer is very simple. Uh, you know through, again, same answer, the word of God. And you hear, like, the, whether it's, whether you hear a voice from the Holy Spirit uh, or from me or from anybody else or anything else, it cannot contradict the word of God. It always has to reinsure itself, and it always has to confirm itself through the Word of God. And, you know, you always, uh, again, let's say, where should I go? Should I move to uh, uh, Texas, or should I move to Illinois? You know, like, I don't know where to move. God, speak to me. Show me the signs. If he's not telling me directly right away through the Holy Spirit, he's going to tell me through either reading the scriptures or through either serving him or through, you know, prayer, fasting, through doing these certain things, he's going to give me my answer. You know, if you don't do anything, if he, you know, he's not going to answer. He's going to answer. He's going to give you that uh, answer through doing certain things, which is asking prayer. Or if it doesn't work through prayer, then fasting. If it doesn't work through fasting, then serving. Some, somebody could come to you and, you know, just get a revelation that you have to move there and come to you. That happened many times. There's lots of uh, testimonies where... One guy comes up to another guy personally in church and uh, tells him, oh, I had a revelation that, you know, you're thinking, praying about where should I move, and God told me that you should move there. I'm like, okay. And, you know, they move there. And that's it. So, you know, if you want to hear, listen to God's voice, you know, basically what we have to do is abide in his word. You know, abiding in his word is listening to his voice, technically. God tells us, you know, to preach, we have to preach. He tells us to evangelize, we have to evangelize. And God tells us, you know, to do miracles, we do miracles, and et cetera, et cetera. But we have to do these certain things. And through that, God speaks to us, he reveals to us, and, you know, through that, that's what, you know, through that. Nothing else. There's absolutely nothing else that God speaks through, but through, you know, uh, doing his work for him. And, uh, the answer doesn't, hold on, let me just see where I am. God speaks through his word always, whether it's coming through directly from the Holy Spirit or from me or from someone else. And, and I already said that, so it's good. There are moments in our lives as Christians where we are just stuck and we can't move on. And there are two reasons behind this cause. Like, I'm not talking about, like, decisions on where should we move. I'm talking about, like, where we're just completely stuck in life. And we can't force ourselves to do something. And the first reason is because of a lie that we believe in. And the lie is, you know, that we're not worthy or, you know, something, some other lie. Like, it's usually basically if we're not worthy. And the second reason is because of sin. Sin and the lie stops us from moving on forward. Those are the two main factors for only factors that stop us from moving on forward. And it's very important to understand that. Uh, no matter how long you're deceived or are in sin, if you're studying the Word of God and trying to abide in it, you will eventually be free. Like I said before, that's the key. Like, if you're stuck in that situation, if you can't move on, if you know, like, you're in this position right now, and that I can't force myself. To the Bible, I can't force my because there's something that's holding me back. The best way to do it is literally through the Word. You can't force yourself to read the Word of God. I don't believe you. You know, get up, force yourself to read the Bible. You could do that. You know, we're all capable of forcing ourselves to humble our flesh and do that. Please open up with me, uh, John, uh, chapter eight. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 32. It says, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right, so that is what will make you free. So no matter what addiction, it doesn't matter. What addiction? It could be a drug uh, addiction. It could be sexual addiction. It could be... Just uh, being passive, doing nothing addiction, you know. It can be any addiction. There's only one solution, abiding in God's word.
yeah, what is abiding God's word? Praying, fasting, going to the suburbs, going to churches, uh, serving others, worshiping God, praising Him, like, like, you know, doing these things. That's the only way. And there's absolutely, and you could force yourself to do that. I mean, there's absolutely no excuse. So, um, what does the Bible say? You know, it says that. Uh, let's all open up 2 Timothy. This is a famous verse that everybody should know by heart. Second Timothy chapter three, uh, verses twelve through seventeen. Verses twelve through seventeen. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving, deceiving and being deceived. Meaning. Those who are evil, you know, at the end of times will get more evil, etc. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and be assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that the childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and to profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. So you could use the scriptures for absolutely everything. And prayer and worshiping, there's, that's the answer to all your solutions. Think about it that way. Uh, a church consists of two things, uh, function and relationship. Function and relationship. That's why it's important for us as, uh, you know, people, we always have to attend a certain ministry. And we always have to have fellowship with each other. Because a church without relationship, there's no function. Without any function, there's no relationship. You know, so one is intertwined with another. And again, function, relationship. We all have to bear some kind of fruit. We cannot be fruitless. If you're just a newborn Christian, then you're lucky. You're in the time period for right now where you can relax, you know, eat off the easy stuff, learn, 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 learn. But eventually, you know, you'll know. Like, you'll, you yourself will know. God will start speaking to you when you're going to have to start devoting yourself to God more. We're going to have to start serving others. We're going to have, but until that time, you can enjoy your time. Relax, take it easy. You know, this message is not for you right now. This message is for the people that have been in church for a very, very long time. And that, you know, they're stuck in church. This is a message for them that, you know, we have to all be in a certain ministry to function. All right? And uh, we have to, again, bear fruit. There's no such thing as a lone Christian. Uh, you can't be an independent Christian. Uh, because Jesus is all about fellowship. And there are many biblical verses where it states about how it's important to have companions. I'll just give you one I'll give you two verses. Uh, let's go to Hebrews. Uh, verse 10. I mean, uh, Hebrews chapter 10. I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as if the matter of some, but exhorting one another. And so much uh, the more as you see the days approaching. In other words, instead of ignoring each other, but being with the, instead of ignoring each other, we should come together, have fellowship together more and more. And as the end of days are approaching, we should do it more and more and more and more. And uh, another verse is uh, uh, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Verses 9 through 12. Chapter 4, 
verses 9 through 12. It says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone with, when he falls, for he has no one to help him. Again, if two lie down, together they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Amen. Amen. All right, that's another evidence why we should always be part of a church, part of a home group, part of other ministries. Um, and um, also very important to understand, there are two different types of people that attend church. Uh, disoriented people, which is the scariest type of people, and the oriented people. Yeah? <laughs> the, the, the disoriented people, uh, you know, they're the ones that believe that they know the truth, and they start their own ministries, and they make other people follow them while they're actually deceived and in deception. Those type of people will always be in church until the end of times, because only at the end of times the church will be perfect. Until that time, the church is under construction, and there's no such thing as a perfect church until that time, until Jesus comes. All right, so don't expect to come to a perfect church. So, or uh, disoriented people, you know, they're just um, these people that they, they manipulate other people for their own glory, not for God's glory, and they think it's for God's glory, but they're, again, they're, they're in the spirit of error. They don't understand what they're doing, you know, because they believe in a lie, and, you know, nobody told them that, you know, the Bible tells you something else. You know, they, you know, see it from a different perspective. So that's really, you know, those are those kind of people are dangerous. And for you not to, um, you know, like you have to know what, what kind of people you're talking to, especially when you're in church. You know, like you can't, like, if you're going to be talking to somebody, you have to know whether this person is deceived or not. Because if you don't know that, he could take you with you, along with you, and then you'll, you know, be in the same company with them, and eventually you'll become deceived as well, you know. So it's, it's very important. That's why it's so important to know exactly what the scriptures teaches you. You know, that's really important. And also, disoriented people, they always complain. They always see problems in church, and they always spread false rumors. Uh, you know, they, you know, jump from church to church until they find the right one, not realizing that they are the problems. That, you know, you have to build up the church. That there's no, you know, same thing as you have to build up a wedding. You know, you never get married to a princess or a prince, you know. It doesn't work that way. You get married, you have to build, you have to build it, you have to make it work, you have to make it work, you know. I know so exactly. I'm not married, so, but you can ask him, he'll confirm. Yeah, I will. So, <laughs> You know, so same thing with church. You know, we have to come to church and we have to build it up. We have to do something. We can't be absolutely useless because then God will eventually get rid of us because we're foolish. He prunes those who don't think through. That's very important to understand. So, again, if you see a problem, you know, you could, you know, become oriented. Oriented people, they see problems, but instead of you know, uh, spreading false rumors, they, again, they meet with the pastors, they meet with other people, they talk about it, they pray about it, they fast about it, they teach about it, they don't, you know, jump from church to church, they just help that, they try to help that other person, those oriented people, people that actually know what the scripture talks about. You know, and um, again, th those kind of people are always devoted, they always try to help others, they always pray, they fast, they communicate with others, they evangelize, you know, and they see somebody falling, they try to help them out. You know, they don't blame them for anything. Because who are we to judge? And, um, yeah, and, uh, hold on, I wanted to say something. You want, if you want a really good church, again, you got to build it. It's never good from the beginning. Our church is basically a rehabilitation center for messed up people. Right? And the difference between us and unsaved people is that Christians are forgiven, not Christians are not forgiven. That's the only difference. All right, so we're still sinners, but we're forgiven. It's very important. So my sermon is coming to a close. It's a very short sermon, but I think it's very powerful. Uh, the renewing of mind will take place little by little. So don't expect, you know, uh, that your mind, your mentality is going to change right away. You know, like 
you know, I'm going to start thinking better, I'm going to start writing. No, it takes, it's a process. It's a process that comes with, you know, only time. And you have to keep on doing it. Never give up. Never give up. Always pray. Always read the Bible. Always serve. Always come to some groups. Come to church. You know, be active. Keep on doing it. Never stop. And, and God will always provide. God will always bless you. He'll never leave you empty-handed. You're going through a problem. He will provide. You're going through this. He'll, but the moment you stop reading, the moment you stop praying, the moment you stop attending a certain uh, group, the moment you stop uh, doing something, you're just letting more problems into you because that's exactly what the devil wants from you. The devil wants you to, you know, stop. And, that, and once you stop, more problems will come. More questions will come. More doubt will come. More, uh, you know, false revelations will come. More, like, you're just, you know, messing your, basically, you know, you're just screwing yourself over if you, you know, stop. You know, so, again, we have to pray against evil thoughts. We have to pray against evil spirits. And basically, if you see somebody sick, if you don't know how to pray, you could, you know, learn how to pray by just taking the scripture and declaring it into your life. You know, if you see somebody sick, like in your family, you know, somebody has cancer, you just take the Bible and you say, you know, you find a verse where it says, but Jesus stripes your kill, and you just declare that. And that's how you pray. With anything else, you know, you could just, especially the way we think, we have to find verses in the Bible that help us, you know, how to think. Like, we have to think the right way. I could give you a few Bible verses, uh, the, the ones that I, you know, usually declare into my life, you know, once every other day. Uh, you know, I, I declare these verses every single day to help me to think you know, the way I, you know, I do, and the way God wants us to think. Let's just open up with me. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, uh, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, you can declare this verse every single day into your life. And God help me, you know, Another good verse that you could uh, declare uh, into your life is 2 Corinthians. Chapter 10, verses 3 uh, through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our worker are not uh, carnally, but mightily in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being re uh, ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled, when our obedience is fulfilled. Meaning, you know, our when our obedience is fulfilled, then God will provide. Basically, just read verse 6 again. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When our obedience is fulfilled, God acts justly according to us. You know, like, when we obey God's word, God acts justly towards us. He doesn't, you know, so that's what verse 6 basically says. You know, and again, taking every single thought captive, that's really important. Like, say, you know, I'm thinking about something perverted and it can't stop. You say right away, I take captive every thought and emotion and feel it to Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, right away, you know, if it doesn't work right away, you just keep on repeating that same, you know, line until it works. You know, if you have to repeat it how many times, repeat it how many times. Just keep on repeating it until, it's, you know, you eventually are in control of your mind. So it's really important. And again, verse 6 says, once you obey, God will do justly according. So when you obey God's word, he will bless you. He will help you. He will provide. Another verse is Philippines 4. My favorite verse is Philippines. Philippines chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness, in other translations it says self-control, so let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. Meaning, you know, don't be shy to ask God for something. Uh, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. God wants us to ask Him. You know, if we are in need, you know, He wants us. It's like a father and son. A father always wants the son to come to Him 
and ask him for a favor. You know, don't think that God doesn't want to speak to you. That's, you know, that's against what the Bible speaks. So, verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, help me, Father, to meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me do these things, that the God of peace will be with you. Do these things and the God will give peace, meaning God will give us peace again when we abide in his word. You know, if you want to listen, if you want to hear God's voice, all you have to do, again, is read the word of God, pray, uh, lead a certain ministry, and you will hear God's voice. He will speak through your actions, through your, like, he will give you revelations, he will speak to you. And that is listening to God's voice. Listening to God's voice is basically the same thing as doing God's, you know, word, God's command for us. And those who are hard-headed, you know, for those who are hard for those who are, you know, know that they have to do something, but still, you know, decide not to, you know, because, you know, God literally calls them fools. We can read that in uh, Proverbs 27. Let's open up Proverbs 27. This is my last verse for today. Proverbs 27. Twenty-two through twenty-three. It says, "Be uh, yeah, twenty-two through twenty-three. It says, though you grind a fool in a motor with a pestle, a motor and a pestle. A motor is like the bowl, and a pestle is like the stick. What do you guys know what that is, right? Yeah, I'm just making sure. Uh, uh, so, though you grind a fool in a motor with a pestle, along with crushed grain, a uh, crushed grain symbolizes the word of God." But that's a whole other topic, so we're not going to go over there. Uh, yet uh, his foolishness will not depart from him. So there are those kind of people in church today, in church, you know, that they know what's right. They know the word of God. They know what they have to do, but they still refuse to do what's right. Those people God calls them foolish. Calls them foolish. It says, yet his foolishness will not depart from him. And then verse 23 is for the leaders of the church. It says, be children to know the state of your flocks, and attend to your herds. That's for leaders for us to understand. The leaders have to be aware of what's going on in the church. If they're not aware of what's going on in the church, then there's always, you know, a downfall, and, you know, it's not good for the church. And that's my message today. My message today is, you know, again, listening to the voice of God, which means that you have to abide in his word, Means you have to serve. Again, we have to. We are the ones that build up the church. Nobody else. It's us. Me, you, we build up the church. And um, again, what uh, me and Isaiah were talking about recently. Uh, next week, starting from next week, I'm gonna hand out pieces, uh, pieces of sheet paper, uh, paper with um, ministries and everything. And every, everybody will be able to choose their own ministry. Basically, you write down your name. The years that you've been in church, if you're not in church, then you can't, you know, you can't take part of this because you have to be part of a church to do this. And um, everybody will have basically, if, if you're, if you feel that God's calling you to do something, basically you get to choose your ministry. And we're going to write that down. We're going to make you, you know, pray for it. We're going to fast for it. Eventually, we're going to talk to the pastors, and eventually, you know, we'll bless you. And I'm sorry, we're going to eventually. This is going to. So next week, I'm going to be handing out the sheets. And uh, another thing that we're going to be doing. Uh, me and uh, Pastor Isaiah, we talked about this. Is, uh, we're going to start making everybody that comes here often pray at least five minutes. Uh, everybody, well, not everybody, but somebody individually, you know, someone different. Every single Friday, the same way Martha prayed today to start the service, somebody else, somebody new will come here and pray to just to start the service. We think that's wrong because we believe that um, every single person needs to know how to pray. And there's no exceptions, no excuses. I don't care what kind of a sinner you are. What kind of a hypocrite you think you are? You know, there's no excuses. You still have to know how to pray. And, uh, you know, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to be coming up to random people. We're going to be saying, can you please pray? You know, and 
If not, we'll find somebody else. But eventually, that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm just letting you guys know. And that's it for today. Can I just share something? Yeah, that's true. Is that okay? That's true. Because, yeah. like, is this kind of related? So, or should I share from here? Or yeah, go ahead. Basically, like, I just, I just, like, all the stuff that Ellie was talking about, right? About the Bible and about praying and stuff. I just really experienced a very dramatic, um, I experienced all of that in a very dramatic way last year. Because I was kind of really, really crushed in a lot of different areas. My health, I lost my job. Um, you know, people I live with weren't very nice to me for various reasons. Uh, you know, but the, the point is that I kind of had to figure out how to fight that, right? And and I kind of I tried or I did what Ali was talking about in many ways, you know, and it was. A struggle, but it helped. Like it, you know, and it's not that like, like Ilya's saying you have to, you do have to, but it's not like oh you have to in the sense that if you don't, God's gonna whack you and you know, not in that sense. You have to in the way that like you have to eat, sleep, and drink. eat, yeah, like you have to take care of your body, right? You have to um, get an education, right? We all agree that we have to do this thing. And, you know, kids don't go to their parents and be like, I hate you, you make me go to school. And, you know, yeah, I don't want to go to school anymore. I just want to lay at home and watch TV, and you're so mean to me for making me do that, right? What, they do, but but deep inside they understand, right, that they, it's not like they have to have to. They have to for their own good, right? So it's kind of like that, you know, and how it really does work. Like, it's hard to explain unless you've actually experienced it, you know? But it really does. Being in a ministry with other believers, praying with other believers, reading the Bible with other believers. If you can't do it yourself, do it with somebody else. Because I can do it myself for a while there. Right? It was too hard for me. But if you do it with somebody else who's stronger than you, it really does lift you up and it really does change who you are. Which is kind of where the root of the problem usually is. It's in you and it's in what you you know, like what you think about a lot of areas, you know, like, like if you have low self-confidence, that's going to affect your, your whole life, really, and who can change that but God, you know, because nobody tells you that you're special unconditionally in this world, like maybe your mom, you know, only God will tell you that, only God will tell you that, it doesn't matter if you haven't accomplished anything, you're already special unconditionally, you're already in and that's in the Bible, and that's in the church, and that's in the, that you feel that through prayer. Like, it's all connected, you know? You do these things, and you feel God telling you who you really are supposed to be, you know? Not who you think you are, which is very different. Like, a lot of times, the world will just smack us down, you know? And we begin to believe things that aren't true. Like, like Elise said, believing in lies, right? But... God will just change what you believe, you know, and he will do that through what you, like, the, through the, those steps that you take, so I just wanted to share that. And it works. It does. It works. Yeah. I like to uh, do that as well as I mean, uh, what I can say, nice words, very good. Very solid food, I would say, like spiritual food. Uh, as you know, it's not for 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 those who are new, but for for those who been in church for some time. Right? So it's a very nice work. Uh, just finish, like you know, conclusion, little conclusion of what he said. So basically, um, it's very important for us to to um, to stay connected. To God, right? To read the Bible, to, to pray to God, to be in, in the spiritual family, to be among his uh, brothers and sisters, right? So it's very important for us. I think that uh, Jesus was a perfect example of how, uh, you know, we should be with God, right? So we know that he was always praying to God. He was, he was always, you know, we know he was a really busy man, right? 
Jesus. He was, he was really busy here on earth. And we know that, um, that he was uh, serving, he was doing his job on earth, he was going with the disciples, he was healing people and doing this uh, ministry that God appointed him to do. But we also know that after that time, he was praying to God nightly, at night. Right? So he was very busy, he was doing stuff, but then he comes and he always reconnects to God in, through the prayer, in the, in the prayer. Right, guys? So it's a it's, it's very good example for us, Jesus Christ. And I want to um, just uh, read this one verse. It's in John 17, 20 to 26. Um, Jesus prays for believers today. Before he prays for disciples, and now we're going to read as he prays for believers. It's in John chapter 17, verse 20. I do not, I, I do not pray for those alone, speaking about disciples, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I am them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. See, uh, one of the um, missions, the part of the mission Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ was to show Father to people, to show, uh, yeah, to reconnect people with, with the God, show Father to people, and, and basically, you know, be as example to every, everybody, uh, you know, everyone who believes in him. Amen? So... Uh, it's very important to be connected to God. It's very important to pray, to read the Bible. And, and you know, for some, for some of you maybe, because I see some new people, maybe if you never um, accepted Jesus Christ, right? So you never uh, went to this point where you actually, uh, you know, said, Lord, I'm giving up. You know, as you said, we all sinners. It doesn't matter, right? So we, we live our lives. We, we do different things. Uh, but there is a difference between uh, those who believed and, and gave his or her life to God. Uh, difference between those and those who never did it. Okay? So uh, that difference is John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So everybody who believes will work. Not perish. Not perish. Will have eternal life. That's what it takes. And forgive me. You know, that's what it takes. Just make this step. Just make this step. Come to God and say, God, forgive me. I know I'm a sinner. I know that, you know, I, I'm not deserving. I know that uh, this and, I did this and this. I forgive me. I'm not going to do this anymore. And, and God forgives. And this is first step in our journey towards to heaven. Right? This is, this is the first step as we walk towards, towards God. Amen? So, God, guys, um, if you want to accept Jesus Christ, if you want to pray, just come, come here and we're going to pray. Um, if you maybe have any questions or want to discuss something more, you know, come, all right? And also we have a cell groups. Uh, we have a cell group once a week, that's at least <laughs> Tuesday. So everybody who is not uh, going to any cell group, uh, you can join us, all right? We actually meet here in this place. Um, Sometimes you need me at Nagyshkago house, <laughs> but uh, yeah, probably we'll start there. We'll see. But it doesn't matter where we meet, right? Uh, as soon as uh, God is in the midst of us, uh, you know, that's what is important. Amen? So, um, it's a very short service. Very good. 9.40. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, yeah, amen. Uh, we just pray. We we'll just want to stand, stand up and just pray, and um, so we finish up. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you for this evening, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your wisdom, Lord. Thank you that you are teaching us tonight, Lord. Thank you that, that, that you uh, 
that you give it to us, Lord, your precious words tonight, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we accept your word. Lord, we accept. And we also want, Lord, that you will help us to, to uh, for us not only to understand this word, not only to understand with our, uh, with our uh, physical or, or our minds, but also to, to put that word into practice and use it. Lord, help us to uh, really, uh, really uh, spend more time with you, Lord. Uh, read the Bible, pray, and, and be in this connection with you. Lord, help us to uh, follow you, Lord Jesus, and do what you, uh, uh, you did or show us 2,000 years ago. Lord, help us to follow you, uh, whatever you said in the Bible, Lord. Uh, you know, help us to be like you, Lord. Lord, uh, you show us uh, Father. Jesus, you show us Father, Lord. So we may be connected with you and with Father, Lord, through you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, help us to uh, put all these things into the practice, Lord. Help us to, um, uh, to be uh, the, real, uh, the, the real followers, not only uh, people who, who may just understand or just can read, but also uh, can put these things into the practice, Lord. I thank you, Lord, and I give you glory. Lord, I also pray for everybody who is here, Lord. I, I pray for, for our jobs, for, for colleges, for whatever places we go, Lord. Just uh, let it be your blessing in our lives, Lord. Let it be your holy hand in, in, in our lives. That every, everywhere that we go, Lord, let it be your blessing. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory, Lord, and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. <laughs> we can go. We can meet uh, tomorrow. By the way, tomorrow is the Jewish main church service, so come. Have a hand. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh, if you need a prayer, I'm going to